What's up guys, my name is Lex Valtais and welcome to a new segment called Lex Reflect. Today I'm going to take you guys back to 2010, it's the big game. It was one of the biggest games I've played up until that moment. The buy-in is $100,000 with 200 and 400 blinds. Let's just dive straight into the video. I can't wait to watch back at these hands. And I think that today we're going to learn an important lesson, keeping your composure at the poker table. Cool. Great hand for Daniel, he's going to open. Very standard, of course, 10 9 suit is a great hand. This is the loose cannon, which is what the show was about. Legend. Doyle calls. Ace queen for Lex. Such a good spot. Oh, him again. Him and his spots again. Except you have to act for Oh, yeah. yeah suck Lex Doyle. pops to 7,000. Lex is in a good spot with the best hand. All right, so this is where it gets interesting. We're out of position. I make it almost 20 big blinds. This is because I play very aggressive and I would raise a lot of hands. Ace-Queen suited is an absolute monster, especially short-handed. I make a comment about a six spot because Daniel and I talked a shitload of poker strategy back then. We talk over the phone all the time. He was making a migration back towards cash games from tournaments also because of the show and just because it caught his interest. And one of the things he told me as a pointer was that I could never let a spot go. I wouldn't really pick my spots and I would just go for all of them. Such a good spot. In this sense, I'm a little bit underrepresenting my hand because it is a six spot and oftentimes I would also announce that I noticed it's a six spot. So there's definitely like a little Easter egg I want to put there in case, uh, in case I want to use that for later, but that might not always be a smart idea. Justin folds. Daniel, of course, is going to call. He has a great hand. Hand can go multi-way very easily. Russ folds. Just plays very well, very well. I remember writing about this one, huh? Yep. So I guess I'll have What'd to throw you say? Heads up, yeah. right, Dole gets out, pot is heads up. Of course, we're gonna be out of position. 4-10-4, four, Daniel with top pair. Run this looks like a pretty safe flop for Lex to continue, but we know Daniel's got the best hand. It's a pretty good board for us. I definitely want to bet a little bit bigger. Denying equity is great. Um, Daniel's gonna have a ton of hands like Jack-9 suited, 8-7 suited, and getting those to fold is nice. The one thing I don't like is not having a diamond on board. These days, I would definitely uh, try to look for a diamond uh, if I want to bet this hand. I love the six spot speech. That was the best part of this hand. It's fun. Uh, 11. Huh? That's a good level, huh? It was. It's good. Six spot. Boom, raise, da da da. I hope it works. All right, so Daniel calls. I didn't see Daniel calling pre-flop with 10-9 and then folding top pair. No way, no how. The turn, six of clubs gives Daniel a flush draw. Not a great card for me. I'm generally looking for a jack or higher for me to continue betting uh, with a lot of my range. My guess is Daniel likes his hand right now. Let's see if he likes it enough to fire and try to take it down. Nope. Oh, it's a two-handed check. All right, so Daniel checks, and this is really not that great for me because I really expect him to bet a lot of his bluffs. If he does float with a hand like Queen Jack suited, I do think that he's going to uh, bet sometimes. Maybe he's a little bit afraid to get check raised and he could check the club variety. Uh, however, if he does have a hand like Jack-9, 8-9, uh, I do think that he's going to stab now uh, with his bluffs. I do think that he's going to check his ace highs behind on the turn, so that's a, that's a good sign for me. He might have a hand like ace-6 even uh, that had a hard draw or a spade draw. But other than that, I do expect him to bet a lot. That doesn't mean that he has a really strong range either, right? Because if he has a hand like tens or have fours or sixes, I definitely think he's going to bet or a hand like pocket jack. So it's a little bit of a weird range. I know he has something. I just also know that it's not the nuts. So it's very interesting uh, how this uh, board develops between us. But I don't think he has a complete air ball anymore. Nine of diamonds on the river. Daniel's check for pot control in case he misses or hates the river. If Daniel was a little bit of a tighter player, I definitely would have hate, hated the nine. I think nines makes up a, a very big part of his uh, range pre-flop by raising and calling there. However, Daniel does like to play more hands than most, so I don't necessarily think this is too bad. Um, because I know that Daniel has something, but it's not great, so that means that his range is capped, right? There's a ceiling to his range. He doesn't have the nuts anymore. I'm all in. Therefore, I decide to give him a friendly glance over uh, and move all in. Such level. I mean, you know more about my game than anyone, so. True. Daniel and Lex play a lot of poker together, and they talk about it even more. Also true. Right now, what Lex is doing is trying to make Daniel think he was trying to check-raise the turn and rep an overpair. It's a weird river card for So him. I know that Daniel's going to be weakish here, right? And that's what I really want to punish. I really want to put maximum pressure. If he has a hand like sevens, I really don't want to bet just 20,000 because he's never going to fold. 
So I have to go for a very large bet and I would do, do this also with my value. You can tell from Negranu tanking here that he knows that I would also do it with my value. Everything's going according to plan. I have him sweating. He's trying to figure out also if I would do this with ace 10 or king 10, which I definitely would. And I think what's really interesting to mention is that Daniel knows from my strategy, I try to punish people uh, on the rivers when I have really strong hands. I have a very bluffy image, and that means that I'm going to go for really big bets. Patented over bet. Daniel trying to break Lex in the cross examination. You can tell that Daniel's Put me on a, 10, probably. a little bit flip-flopping in the strategy department, I'm gonna throw it away. which is very normal. We have a lot of history together, and he's going to try a new strategy here. Fire on the river. Are you hoping that I'm going to play good here? I'm so confused. Joke one. I like Lex too. Joke <laughs> I two. Can give him money. And that's where I fuck up. That's where you see my face tension. And this is such an important lesson for me because it's really important to just keep your face straight. You don't always know how you're going to convey information. You don't know if your smile is going to look relaxed. You don't know if that sip of a drink looks completely natural. Oftentimes it might feel natural, but there's also little, little things that can give tension away. <laughs> now, you immediately see Daniel's demeanor change. He asks for a count and he makes the call five seconds later. Figured it out. Great call by Daniel, and I got purely owned based on a live read. Superman Daniel made the hero call, and there's a very unhappy Lex Luthor. Two hundred and ten thousand dollar pot. Lex for another hundred grand. He All she wrote. Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand dollars down. So lesson learned, and this is definitely something that saved me a lot of money in the future. Uh, after this hand, uh, Daniel also was gracious enough to tell me about it, and I watched the footage back a hundred times, and I learned so much from it. So I really wanted to start with this hand. It's kind of fun to start with the hand that I lose, lose in. Um, I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Uh, please comment what you thought about the hand, what you think about this new segment, what you would like to see. Obviously, we have tons of possibilities with this. Please like, subscribe, let me know that you like it, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much. I love the six spot speech. That was the best part of this hand. Fun. Uh, 11. That's huh? a good level. Huh? It was. It's good. Six spot. Boom. Raise. Da da da.